everybody and welcome to this service of Midweek Holy Communion on the 15th of April. Um, we are still of course very much in the season of Easter so our readings and our prayers will continue to reflect that theme. I hope that you're enjoying this uh, really nice, if chilly, spring weather and are able to get out and about a bit and uh, enjoy all the uh, wonderful things you can see at this time of year. So let's begin our service, shall we? We meet in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the collect for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so now we come to the Gospel reading, which today comes from John, chapter 21, beginning at the first verse and going through to verse 14. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. 
This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So that's another wonderful story that we often read at this time of year. And you'll notice, of course, that the disciples have moved away from Jerusalem where they'd been and where they'd seen Jesus first of all after, he'd, after he was risen from the dead. And they'd gone back home and they were now by the Sea of Galilee, uh, where, for, where, of course, for at least four of them, Peter and Andrew and James and John, their journey with Jesus had begun three years ago when they'd been sitting on the beach mending their nets and Jesus had come along and called them to follow him. And of course, we need to remember that their world, uh, since uh, Jesus had died, had been turned upside down. Not only had they tried to cope with the, the shock of the crucifixion and Jesus' death and burial, they're now also having to try and come to terms with the fact that he seems once again to be alive. And uh, everything is really strange. The, the normalities of their life have been completely turned upside down. So they've gone home. And perhaps in going home to the Sea of Galilee, where they lived and, and been brought up and born, they were hoping to regain some of the familiarity and the safety and the stability of their former lives in amongst all this change and mayhem that had taken, a, taken over them. And then, of course, Peter says, let's go fishing. So out they go. Uh, and this was something that they knew about, or at least Peter and James and John did. And hopefully this particular activity would provide no surprises. It would just uh, add to the sense of familiarity and safety that they were hoping to find. But, as we heard in the story, it doesn't go well. Uh, they're out all night in the boat and they catch absolutely nothing. No fish whatsoever. Zilch. And then as dawn breaks, they take the boat back towards the land. And it's that kind of time of day when it's beginning to get light so you can see objects and see people around, but you can't really see who they are or what exactly they are. <clears throat> and they see this person on the shore and the person calls out to them. It looks like you haven't caught any fish, guys. And they say, no, we haven't. So the person says, cast your net over the right side of the boat and you'll find some. So they do that, and to their absolute amazement and surprise, uh, the net becomes full with one enormous, gigantic shoal of fish, bigger than any of them have ever seen before. It's absolutely amazing. And it's so, such an enormous shoal in the net that they can't get the net into the boat. So all they can do is kind of try and take the boat towards the shore with the net dragging on behind. And then, of course, they realise that it's Jesus on the beach, the risen Lord Jesus Christ. And Peter jumps in, gets to the shore, and the others follow in the boat. And there's already a barbecue burning on the shore with bread and fish as well. Uh, but Jesus says to them, bring me some of the fish you've just caught. So they go back to the boat and, of course, the reality of the miracle hits them again. There's 153 fish in the net and uh, the net is not torn, and they're unable, really, to, to, to do anything much with it at, uh, at all. They're aware that there's an enormous miracle that's just taken place again. And then, of course, they have breakfast. And the way in which Jesus does it, giving thanks for the bread and giving thanks for the fish and giving it to each one of them, is very reminiscent of that last supper meal that they had in the upper room just before Jesus was crucified. So instead of going back and finding familiarity and safety and security, they find that the boundaries of their world have been stretched even more and they have even more shock and surprise to deal with. But that's what it's like when you're in the company of the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing is the same. Your world changes. The familiar boundaries of your life move and expand. The safety and the security of your life is replaced by the risky and the unfamiliar. And we often find that in the company of Jesus, uh, our comfort zone is removed and we find ourselves in situations we've never been in before. And it can be a bit scary and a bit worrying. But that is the truth. 
the risen Jesus Christ changes people's lives. And if you have Jesus in your life, and if Jesus, you are around Jesus all the time, then you can expect to have your life turned upside down sometimes. And you'll find yourself doing things and going places that you probably didn't expect to go at all. So be warned, life in the company of Jesus is rarely easy, rarely boring, uh, and provides us with all kinds of challenges, which are really exciting. So be encouraged this morning in this Easter season, as we, you and I, rediscover the risen Jesus in our lives again, perhaps, um, <clears throat> expect to be challenged. Expect to find yourself moving in ways and in places that perhaps you'd never expected you would. So let's come now to God in prayer, shall we? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth and the challenge of Easter. Thank you that knowing the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives is such an exciting and challenging thing. And we pray that you will help us to uh, come to terms with all the things that he may ask us to do. Help us to be willing to take risks, maybe to share our faith with others, to go into places we've never been before, taking him with us. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we continue to pray this morning for the Queen and members of the Royal Family as they continue to mourn the loss of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. We pray for the preparations for his funeral on Saturday afternoon. We pray for all who have found his loss difficult to bear, both members of his family and others who knew him, and maybe ordinary members of the public who admired and respected him and have been saddened by his death. And at the same time, we pray for all people who have been recently bereaved, that you would bring them comfort and support in the difficult time they face. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to pray for the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, praying for our own nation, the continuing vaccination rollout, those who continue to care for people who have the virus in hospital. We pray for those who are struggling with their mental health following months of lockdown. And we pray also for other parts of the world, other countries where the situation is worsening. We think especially of Brazil and India and some of our nearer neighbours in Europe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for other causes of concern <clears throat> around the world, for the ongoing difficulties in Northern Ireland, and for other places where there is unrest and tension. We think especially of Myanmar, Yemen, Somalia, Afghanistan, and other places too known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those we know this morning who are in any kind of need. And we name them in our hearts before you now, asking for the risen Lord Jesus Christ to be close to them at this time and to bring them his peace and a real sense of his presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the words of the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. 
and as usual you may want to send a virtual greeting of peace. And so now we come to the Eucharistic prayer and as usual if you'd like to join in with the responses please do so. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the works of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened his, his arms wide upon the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and, taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with St Lawrence and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour to which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And so as usual, I will take the bread and the wine on behalf of all of us. And uh, as I do so, you may just like to reflect in prayer on what we've been thinking about this morning 
or pray for someone you know who is in need. Another prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So that brings us pretty much to the end of our service of Midweek Holy Communion. Thank you very much for joining with me to celebrate this uh, wonderful service together. There'll be a service online on Sunday morning at 10.30 as usual. And don't forget also there's a special service of commemoration for the Duke of Edinburgh, which will be in church at six o'clock on Friday evening, that's tomorrow evening. And it'll also be uh, online on the Facebook page a little later on in the evening. If you can't get to the service, you'd rather not go to the service, this is in church, uh, you can watch it online afterwards. So the final prayer and blessing. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to work, walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.